Okay, the Cañete Basin is located in the central coast of Peru. It is a big a basin, it's about 6,000 square kilometers, and it's part of the Lima department, and it goes from the Andes and goes down until reaching the Pacific coast. The watershed starts at about 4,000 meters of altitude and goes until the sea level. So in the upper part is where you can find all the different Andean ecosystems that provide the water for the downstream areas. In the same way, in the upper part of the watershed is where most of the precipitation of the basin occurs. We have about 1,000 millimeters per year. As you start going down, then the ecosystems and the landscape changing from Andean grasslands to Andean forests. And then if you keep going down, then you will start finding very dry landscape with just about seven millimeters of precipitation per year. In the upper area, the water is mostly used for agriculture and for domestic use. So if you are reach the middle part of the watershed, the, the water then is used for agriculture in the valley of the river and also is used for producing hydropower and also to grow streams in the river. And then if you reach the bottom part of the basin, then most of the water is used for agriculture and the dry lands. And then it's also used for domestic purposes of the Cañete town mainly. And then also for some industries, although most of the water is from the upstream ecosystem, most of the water is really used in the downstream area and the agriculture is using about 83% of the available water. There is one study that compared the glaciers some 40 years ago and how they look now, I mean, in terms of the cover of, of the glaciers. If you see that study, there has been a loss in the ice cover of about 40%. There were 17 glaciers in the area and now there is only 11. Yeah, some of the environmental problems is the pollution of water due to the mining activity and also due to the contamination with wastewater coming from small uh, towns in the upper areas. Livestock is being practiced in the upper area. There are some complaints about passion of soils has been causing the degradation of some uh, natural grasslands ecosystem. There are some farmers in the downstream area that say that they cannot export their products because of the quality of water. It doesn't meet the requirements for the production of food that is going out of the country. And also in terms of the future availability of water, and that has to be with the melting of the glaciers, of course, there will be a great impact. The project that SIA has been leading with the support of the Challenge Program on Water and Food has been to evaluate what will be the effects of introducing a benefit sharing mechanism. In this case, we are talking specifically of payment for ecosystem services scheme. We have been trying to see what will be the real purpose of that mechanism in the watershed, what will be the objective, what this is trying to get, and uh, what is the conceptual framework behind it. And then we have been going together with the, the Ministry of Environment, trying to see what will be the priority areas in the watershed that may be targeted for a potential investment coming from a payment for ecosystem services scheme. The other thing that we have been doing with this project is estimating what is the economic importance of the hydrological ecosystem services that are provided in the upper watershed and that are used in the downstream area. There has been other role that the project has been playing and it's an intended role that just emerged during the implementation of the project and is 
how we have been advising the Ministry of Environment in the formulation of a law for promoting payment for ecosystem services in watersheds in Peru. In terms of water users, the most important are the farmers in the downstream area and in the middle part is the hydropower company that is the second largest hydropower in Peru. The other one is the urban population located in the Cañete town and also the rural population and in the countryside of the watershed. But in terms of institutional actors, we have the local government at the district and the province level. And we have also, also we have the local water authority. The main conflict is the one between the hydropower company and the local community, especially those that are located in the upper part because they claim for some kind of compensation because of some interventions that the hydropower have had to do in the upper part. So, so this is a permanent conflict and so that's why the, for the hydropower is interesting this mechanism that we are proposing because it's a way to support an initiative that is going to generate benefits to the people that is located upstream. If you apply the pure concept that is used when people talk about payment for ecosystem services, one of the criteria is additionality. However, in this case, it's not a matter of paying for having something in, in addition, but it's, it's a way to recognize something that is very deliberate, but there is not any mechanisms that recognize this delivery of ecosystem services. And this is very important because in the different participatory meetings that we have had, the users of the ecosystem services recognize the role of the upper part of the watershed in providing these services. And actually they say they will be really willing to reward something and also to ensure that the delivery of the service is going to be maintained.